The days have turned to months since the water crisis in Flint, Michigan first came to light. The lead poisoning in the water, the result of a shift in the water supply ordered by an emergency manager to cut costs, is being connected to everything from a rise in lead levels in children's blood to Legionnaire's disease. Brenda Lawrence represents the 14th district in Michigan. This is her home turf. I asked her what that water crisis looks like. Talk directly to us, Congressman, about what is happening in Flint right now. What are people dealing with up close? Right now, there is this lack of trust in our government. Um, there's water being distributed. Uh, there are central locations where people are picking up water. So think about water to drink, water to cook with, water to bathe with. Um, it is a situation that has so many ripple effects. Just think about our government. There's three basic things every human being that is a citizen of these United States expect from their government. That's air, that's clean to breathe, food that's safe to eat, and water that they can consume that will not harm them. We fail in a basic trust of our government. We don't think about it in America when we turn on our water. So what did we learn from this situation? We learned that there was a breakdown in our government. There, for some reason, there was this sense of, for economic reasons, not to comply with the Clean Water Act, not to ensure that the safety of American citizens, 10, it was 100,000 people, 7,000 children. The children is a critical issue because lead that was in the water because of lack of treatment, it attacks the brain of a developing child. And it's irreversible. You cannot go back and clean it up. When did you first become aware of the problem? I became aware of the problem living in Michigan when Dan Kildee started talking about this water issue. So I drove up, he's an hour away from me, and we sat down with the EPA, the Environmental Protection, and we also sat down with the Michigan Environmental Quality Department and said, what is happening here? Because they were under an emergency manager. An emergency manager is the state government taking all home rule away from a local city. So the state made this decision. And then from that, we, my heart went out to, to this community. I mean, I'm, I'm a member of Congress. I was previously a mayor. Our ultimate responsibility is to take care of the people of this country. And so I call, I sit on the oversight committee and I call for a hearing asking for all those people who were the decision makers to come and tell us what happened, when it happened, and why did you not treat the water? As a mayor, I used to say this all the time. People say, what keeps you awake at night? I said, it is, you flush your toilet and you go to bed. I am concerned about the infrastructure under the ground. If we cannot provide clean water to our communities, to our country, we cannot live. And this water main breaks, bridges falling, all of these things until it, we don't see it and everything seems normal. But those of us who know, we have an infrastructure crisis. And the poor and those, the areas where you're poor and the areas where there's majority, minority, those areas tend to have the greatest crisis waiting to explode. So talk about why the pressure on, car, on, on electives has permitted this to continue, because you look at the out, you, from the outside, you look at our electoral system and you say, well, local people elect local officials, they should be accountable for local needs. Mm -hmm. Why hasn't that worked? And instead, why have we had this res the result of kicking these infrastructure needs down the, down the road? Let's look at the financing of cities in America. The poor the community, the less resources they have. The poor the community, the less voice they have. They do not have the power of the big voices, the infrastructure people that would, the residents that would say this is unacceptable. We know poor people are not heard. So then they are usually in the older parts of the community. 
So that elevates the challenges of their infrastructure. So if, no, if I have a choice and the infrastructure is failing, I have money and resources, I move. Mm. But if I don't have resources, I'm there. This is my home. This is where I live because I don't have the money to move. So the people who are in power choose other locations. So here we are with this epidemic in our country with the per people with the less amount of influence and resources. So how do we need to restructure not just our priorities, but our democracy, our, our systems of power? It's incumbent upon me as a member of Congress. That's why I call for this hearing. And I'm going to continue this with the messaging on investment of our infrastructure. If we start with water and saying that we are going to finance the replace, replacing of lead pipes in America, how, how, that's simplistic, but that is so powerful. It's an investment from us to these communities federal dollars that we're talking about, we find money for um, a multitude of things. Water is basic in America. We must have a collective agenda on fixing the water system in America. Should Governor Rick Snyder be replaced? Rick Snyder is the ultimate responsible person. He said it in his state of the state. He apologized and he said the buck stops with me and he said he was going to fix it. There is going to be a lot of discussion on where he is. I don't think this man deliberately as a governor poisoned the children of Flint. I will never say that. But the reality is 9,000 children have been poisoned by lead in our drinking water. Part of the job for us as elected officials is to know what the challenges are so that we can go do our job and legislate. So I'm, I'm so proud of the Congressional Progressive Caucus and the Black Caucus and, and the leadership are going to Flint to hear the people. And I, again, I'm pushing for this not to be an episode, well, but a call to action. A call to action to change things. What changes could you imagine? I mean, what do we need to change about the way we make decisions, about the way we fund infrastructure, um, about how we you know, keep people accountable? In brief, do you see it? I see the way that we change things is that we really elevate the basic needs of our country. Um, security of our country is extremely important. Um, the investment in our infrastructure is extremely important, but food, air and water, that should always be a priority because if we don't have those, we die. A priority meaning government should have planning. And, How yes. important is planning? It's, it's, it's the budget. It's investment of resources, making it a priority. When we debate the budget and we have things like, are we going to plan, uh, fund Planned Parenthood? And we have an infrastructure crisis, we spent millions of dollars on the Benghazi hearing. Millions. That millions of dollars could have gone into our infrastructure. We got to get it right. Thank you so much. Thank that you. That was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.